In today's episode, we will discuss contract negotiation and talk about some helpful tips to negotiate strong agreements to protect your business. There are entire books written on this subject, and therefore, this will not be a deep dive into the philosophy or methodology of negotiation, but rather some guidance that I have found valuable when negotiating vendor contracts. The Saito Mentor Philosophy on Contract Negotiation is that both parties need to get something from the agreement. Keep this in mind as you negotiate and keep in mind that negotiating agreements is not you against them. It's agreeing to terms of a partnership. Partnership being the operative word. Reality is that IT requires partnerships with many vendors. And picking strong partners and building good relationships with them can benefit your organization. That means give and take in the negotiation. I recommend legal review of IT contracts as well, unless you are very clear on the agreement language and the contract dollar amounts low. For large IT contracts, you should always have legal review. Service level agreements. Any vendor that is providing a service to you that you regard as production demands the inclusion of service level agreements within your negotiated agreement. Service level agreements specify the availability, support, and maintenance parameters of the service or system you're contracting for. Service level agreements are your organization's safety net against poor service from a provider. If a partner is providing a service like data center space, call center functions, claims processing, cloud and web services, providing a unified communications platform, or providing monitoring of your environment for security or network management, they all should include SLAs. You, as the CITO, should review closely any SLAs and be bold about specifying your needs. I have many times specified and received service level agreement changes that the vendor really didn't want to make, but that later saved me and my organization heartache. And some SLA additions I requested, the vendors actually appreciated as it improved their performance. And excellence can lead to increased profitability. When negotiating a contract, I will always try to bake in performance-based payment structures in case the vendor fails to meet their obligations outlined in the agreement. I also review the termination section carefully and will almost always request additional language in the term for cause section to provide a no-cost or low-cost way out of the agreement in case things go sour with the partnership. It does happen that a vendor will not deliver on their promises. And you will need to protect your company against the repercussions and hold the vendor accountable if that happens. Identify milestones in your project or the delivery of the solution that you can use as validation points for success and negotiate payments for services based on those milestones being achieved. Governing law and arbitration. Governing law refers to which state's law shall apply in the event a dispute arises between the contracted partners. And arbitration is a method of settling disputes outside the courtroom. You want governing law to be that of your state if possible. And if you're negotiating a contract with arbitration language, you want arbitration in your county if possible. Typically, your legal team will be local to you and thereby familiar with the laws and arbitration rules of your state and county. All state laws are different, and it puts your company at a disadvantage if pursuit of a legal resolution means arbitration or going to court in another state. It gets more expensive, too. Nobody ever wants to get into legal mess over a contract, but it happens all the time, so you need to think about it. Give your legal team and your company the advantage and push for your state as governing law. 
The exception you'll find is big companies like Amazon and Microsoft, who will likely not change their governing law. I have found that smaller organizations generally will to get the business. With big guys like Amazon, Microsoft, and Cisco, you will end up with their state's governing law. Evergreen clauses, auto renewals, can be nice from a hands-off, no-fuss perspective, but can bite. It is in your best interest that you review agreements on a regular basis. Pay close attention to the payment structures outlined in your agreements. You don't want any surprises and you will need to articulate total cost of ownership for the solution to others in your organization. Know your TCO for your agreements well. During negotiations, my intent is to build a rapport with the new vendor and its people as they will potentially be long-term partners and you want the partnership to be successful. Lastly, do your homework on any vendor that is a potential partner. Check them out from top to bottom. A future episode in the Saito series will be dedicated to vendor management.